Good afternoon. My name is Jack Dale. I'm the chairman of Sandag. I'm here to welcome you to the ribbon cutting and the grand opening for the um, Route 250, Rapid 215, which is a real exciting uh, transit project that we have in San Diego that's going to allow people to get from San Diego State to Balboa Park in roughly 30 minutes and get downtown in uh, roughly 39 minutes. So it's a limited stop thing. It's, it's something that can help kids go to school to help uh, people get around the area and not get in the car. We're very excited about it and we're very glad you're here today. The, uh, this meeting is the very first one in the region where we have meetings just for buses and transit in, in the region. It's the um, first of many to happen. Eric Adams here was the project manager for that. And I will make sure everybody says hello to Eric and we thank him for everything he's done there before I go too far. The other thing about this is you can see way down there there's lights that will in up to other, in a, or what's the word I'm trying to say? Right so that the, um, it will have precedence over other lights for traffic so it will keep moving. We also have you see the sign here that tells you when the next bus is going to be, to be coming so you can plan your time. I, I need to put in a plug for the industrial grind coffee shop over there, the red top. So when you're waiting to go over there and grab a coffee or an iced tea. Um, and then we've got, the, these, it's more than just a sign there, we've got these great bus stops and uh, it's kind of a retro thing for El Cajon Boulevard and we're very excited about that and this is just a piece in a real big puzzle because we understand that there's lots of modes of transportation that are going to be required for getting people around the region. Certainly buses or uh, cars are going to be part of our life, but buses, trains, bicycle lanes, uh, walking, running, it's all part of the plan that we'll be doing over the next 50 years and it, it, it's all going to improve the quality of our life and, and we're very pleased to be a part of that. The, um, an important person in getting this done is the, is the mayor of San Diego, Kevin Faulkner. He, um, I, I can tell you from experience that local government is probably the toughest part of all government because I'm making decisions. You can see me on the street, you can see us at the grocery store, and I'm, 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 we're very approachable. And the toughest part on local government has got to be the mayor, simply because the mayor is responsible for everything that's going on. It's that Kevin probably can go part of San Diego and ask him, why, why is that guy digging a hole in the street over there? Or if he goes over another part, what's being built over here? At the same time, what are you doing about the chargers? And it's a very demanding job, um, and nobody could be doing it better than Mayor Kevin Faulkner. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mayor of San Diego. Uh, yes, a, uh, a little bit of everything. Thank you, Jack, for that introduction. You know, I really want to thank uh, Sandag and MTS for all of their hard work. This is really a true partnership and this is a very proud uh, moment not just for this neighborhood but really for the entire region because it talks about the possibilities and something that I think uh, current riders and future riders are going to be so proud of in terms of this option that's going to be helping. Uh, you know this, this Mid-City is such a needed improvement and this is one of our key transit corridors in the entire city. And while, Jack, I appreciate your, your uh, kind comments, I want to particularly thank our Council President, Todd Gloria, who's been a, a tremendous advocate for getting this up and running. Todd, great job, my friend. Um, because I, I think we all know, and this is going to be you know, benefit to North Park, City Heights, college area, with a fast and reliable transportation option. And it really always comes down to fast and reliable. And that's something that I think MTS uh, does extremely well here in San Diego. Um, but it's also going to help for our environment as we get more people out of cars and into buses. And as a matter of fact, just last week, Council President Gloria and I uh, introduced our climate action plan for the city of San Diego with the goal of cutting greenhouse emissions in the city, cutting them in half by 2035. Projects like this are going to help us reach that goal. They're going to help take people out of their car, reducing single vehicle trips, and get them onto these great buses, these great lanes, and it's going to mean less pollution in our air. An absolute win-win. So I want to just thank everybody again for coming together because this is how smart cities work. This is how people come together, and this is how we make sure that we're providing those options for all of our neighborhoods. 
that we have a lot of work to do when it comes to transportation in the coming years, but we succeed when we tackle ambitious projects, get the community involved, and make it happen. So I just again wanted to say thank you for all of our partners at Sandag and MTS creating this, uh, this fantastic option, efficient transit option, particularly in some of our community's older neighborhoods that need it the most. This is a great example of teamwork. I can't wait to uh, get it rolling this weekend. I think you're going to see a lot of happy smiles on families throughout San Diego. Congratulations, guys, on a job very, very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. As, as the Mayor mentioned, Todd Gloria has just been irreplaceable in the, in the things that we've been doing in San Diego County. Nobody cares more about the people in their district than Todd Gloria. Nobody works harder for his district than, than Todd Gloria. No one's driving my Republican buddies crazier than Todd Gloria. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the San Diego City Council, Todd Gloria. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to Mr. Mayor. You know, Kevin, uh, uh, the mayor, uh, should have mentioned that when he was on the city council, he cast a, uh, a very important vote to make sure this project could move forward. And the mayor is always was very supportive of the project, and I definitely appreciate uh, his support by being here today. Uh, I'm here with multiple hats on. You know, I, I have the great honor of serving as the council president for this great city, as the chair of uh, the transportation committee at Sandag, as a board member for MTS, but today, most importantly, as the guy who's lucky enough to be able to represent this community on the San Diego City Council. And I can tell you that with all those hats on, and that looks a little awkward wearing that many at once, but if I was wearing all those right now, I'd tell you that I am so excited to have this project and this new transportation option now available in Council District 3 and for the people of this great region. You know, this project is transformational and it makes good on promises that we've made to this community that accepted some density here in the neighborhood with the promise of having additional transit options in the community. Today we're fulfilling that particular promise. This project, as you all know, uh, is a $44 million investment uh, in our transportation system, backed up with $20 million from our friends at the Federal Transit Administration. I want to thank those folks for making a good investment in San Diego. We appreciate their dollars. Um, this project also represents more than just transportation. It's important to note that this project is also an incredible investment in infrastructure in this neighborhood. This project isn't just the bus that's here, but that's pretty cool. Uh, it's also it's new sidewalks, new storm drains, new curbs, new gutters, uh, new uh, street signals and traffic lights, and the kinds of things that this community is hungry for that we need in a neighborhood that's 100 years old and now we're finally getting. Uh, but most importantly, this project provides what has always been my, my philosophy when it comes to public transportation, which is that we need to give San Diegans more choices when it comes from getting from A to B. For too long, uh, folks have only had really the choice of getting in their car to get to where they need to go. With this project, we're a step closer to giving people more choices. And I say that personally because I live only a few blocks from here, and this project actually will drop me off near City Hall. Uh, so this is perfect. I'm looking forward to Sunday. Uh, I want to uh, tell you that, as the mayor alluded to, this is a part of an overall strategy to try and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions in this city to make San Diego a leader when it comes to fighting global climate change. And this, coupled with things like bike sharing that's starting later this month, car sharing with Car2Go that's been successful for many years now here in the community. This is helping to address density, parking concerns, traffic congestion, a number of things that I hear very often from the people of District 3. This it was without a doubt a day where we're taking a step forward and it's a step toward a better future. I want to thank everyone who's been involved in this particular effort. This has been a long, long time coming. I saw Miriam Kushner who is here. Uh, Miriam and I, got a round of applause for Miriam. <laughs> I don't know, maybe a decade, not quite. I don't know, it's been a while. Uh, but I remember Miriam being at some of the early meetings and uh, she has been at this for some time. It was mentioned Eric uh, Adams from the, uh, who has been wonderful. Eric, when he uh, first started working on this project, I asked him many, uh, for many things and he delivered on every single one of them. So Eric, thank you so much uh, for bringing this project to completion and doing it so very well. And I know that you're backed up by a wonderful team of folks from Sandag and from MTS, uh, folks from Mug Stoles, uh, Jim Lithicum, others who really helped step 
step up and figure out uh, solutions to our parking challenges. This project was going to eliminate a significant amount of parking. It actually increased the amount of parking in the community. We were able to turn this from a, uh, something that might have been seen as a negative to something that is a universal positive. And that's what happens when we work together collaboratively. So uh, I will just end by saying as an MTS board member, where's Paul Jablonski? As an MTS board member, I want to encourage you to ride uh, ra Rapid 215. Service starts this Sunday. Uh, it will run seven days a week from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. between San Diego State University and our downtown waterfront uh, along Park Boulevard and El Cajon Boulevard. So some might call this the Boulevard Rapid. Uh, and uh, it will run uh, nearly every 10 minutes during the weekday rush hours and every 15 minutes during non-rush hours and on weekends. That's pretty good. That's really an improvement for this community. So uh, finally and most importantly, I want to thank the people of District 3. A lot of you set, uh, put up with a lot of construction for a long period of time. Uh, you were uh, very patient, particularly the small businesses along here on Park Boulevard and along El Cajon Boulevard. Uh, I want to thank you guys for your patience. I hope that when this service starts on Sunday that you'll see that this was worth doing. I think to the senior citizens here at Cathedral Arms and at the other towers, that this improved pedestrian experience here is safer for those of you in the community. Your safety is very important to me. I think on the whole, this is a home run, and I'm happy to be just a small part of it. Thank you all very much. And again, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, buddy. Good job. This weekend, I get, to, I get the privilege of going to Houston for the American Public Transit Association's annual meeting. And when I get, one of the reasons I go there is I get to be able to go to different meetings and different seminars and, and learn more about the industry and the business of uh, transit. And MTS is always well thought of, respected, in awe of, of all the different agencies that are there. It wasn't that long ago that MTS was awarded as the most outstanding transit agency in the country. Harry Mathis, who is the chairman of MTS, is a key reason for why that has happened. Chairman Harry Mathis. Well, thanks very much, Jack. You give me too much credit because you've got such an outstanding staff. And uh, I, I, I think uh, many of the folks here know it, uh, but in going to Houston, and I'll be going to Houston, uh, our CEO, uh, Paul Jablonski, is being recognized as the outstanding CEO in North America by the American Public Transit Association. And, and uh, believe me, that's a rare privilege. People, people have long careers and never get to that point. So congratulations, Paul. Well done. I also want to introduce someone uh, to you that you may not know, uh, but I want you to know, and that's Bill Sproul. He's our chief operating officer for bus. Uh, he's the guy that's responsible for all these buses. Uh, Bill, back there, raise your hand so everybody can see you. Thanks. I got to tell you, it's a privilege uh, to follow on this uh, uh, podium uh, the mayor and the council president. Uh, because these two individuals, uh, their leadership and support of transit is crucial to improving mobility and, and better travel options. And, and uh, without their help, uh, we wouldn't be able to get to this point. And I want to thank you both for your support. You know, I've attended a, a number of occasions recently to introduce our new Rapid service. Uh, we've been at uh, new station locations. And now Rapid is here. And, uh, and, and, and it's really an exciting prospect. Uh, I know that. Uh, uh, the, the people, the folks who uh, live in this area for years. When I was on the council, uh, I was working with the, the leadership in this area uh, who uh, had a lot of uh, concerns, and uh, this is one of their, uh, you know, hoped for uh, advantages uh, that will benefit the members of the community, and uh, along with, of course, the uh, rapid that's coming down I-15. So I know they're delighted to see this, and you'll hear from someone from this community uh, Steve Russell will be here. I worked with Steve for many years, and uh, he certainly has been a, a, a very important factor in making sure that the community was heard down at City Hall. You know, it's a brand new network that we're doing to give people high-frequency bus service, and you heard the hours. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not quite 24. I mean, we've got to give the buses a rest at some point, but, uh, but at the same time, it, it's, it's a service uh, that will uh, be something that can be dependent on and will provide comfort, uh, and, uh, and, and its service will be uh, welcome. And we're getting good vibes back from the services we've already started. Uh, interesting to know that uh, we started back in June, uh, and, uh, and that was Rapid 235. 
which connects Escondido to downtown. It's already a tremendous success. It's carrying more than 3,700 people a day, and last week set a one-day record ridership of 3,962 people. That's, uh, that's really very gratifying, and, and, uh, and we think this, is, this formula is, is going to really click uh, with the people, and we're going to do our best uh, to make them very happy with it. We're celebrating the launch of Rapid 215, the uh, service uh, beginning on Sunday uh, between San Diego State and uh, downtown. Uh, and that will be going on. And, and of course, uh, uh, Rapid 237 on Monday begins service between Rancho Bernardo and, and uh, UC San Diego. So uh, we're really moving up on this. Uh, we're getting the buses. We're, we're, we're basically uh, providing a service that uh, people think have, have told us. And certainly so far, uh, they're showing us that this is what they want. And this is what it's going to take to get people out of their cars uh, into uh, this kind of public transportation. So uh, we, we think that these corridors uh, will work well with uh, transit-oriented development. And, uh, and so uh, it's a new, it's a new uh, experience for us, this kind of service. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think the people will welcome it. And uh, so uh, I, I urge all of you, I think uh, we're, we're uh, on Sunday, if I recall, uh, we're, we're going to have uh, uh, free transit uh, on this uh, line to give people a, an opportunity to ride. And uh, tell your friends, come down yourselves, tell your friends and your neighbors to come down, check it out, and you're going to like it. Thank you very much. As, as, as Chairman Mathens mentioned, Steve Russell has been a real leader and a concerned citizen really trying to take care of his community. It wasn't that long ago he worked for Tony Atkins and she seemed to be doing pretty well and, and part of that. And Steve is an architect and he is now the, I want to say this right, the board president of the City Heights Community Development Corporation. He makes his area better because of what he does. Steve. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, really proud to be here today representing the City Heights Community Development Corporation. And uh, it's, this, is a, this project is helping us move our goals forward of, of better jobs, better communities, better neighborhoods. Uh, this is also the realization of a very long-term dream. It dates back even, uh, predates even my involvement with the Alcohol Boulevard Business Improvement Association, which goes back 18 years. And I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize the long-term vice president of the Alcohol Boulevard BIA, Ms. Polly Gillette, who is here today, to see this event finally. How many years have we talked about this? More than 20, more than 20. But what we're excited about is that this new line creates opportunities for our youth in City Heights to further their education. It connects to downtown, the Thomas Jefferson School of Law, the new School of Architecture, which I gotta put a plug in for my alma mater, uh, and also for, for uh, City College, which is one of the great transitional schools that helps people achieve that first couple rungs on the career ladder. This line takes our City Heights youth directly to those destinations. It also connects with the Balboa Park Cultural Institutions, which are also gateways to higher education and to being a part of the city's life and culture. And it connects to San Diego State University, which needless to say, is one of the great powerhouses here in San Diego and has turned out a lot of the leadership that you see here in our city today. So it also is very important because this represents a commitment to link mid-city to the economic mainstream of San Diego. We have for a long time been the densest, most densely populated area of the city with some of the worst linkages to the great job center. So we're really pleased that this links us to other parts of the transit system, it accesses major employment areas, and it brings tourists and local visitors to the restaurants and shops of mid-city. So we expect this to be a real boon, so our little Saigon will hopefully have, you'll be a destination for people who are staying downtown. People will be able to get off the train, the Santa Fe Depot, and take the rapid to see our centennial celebration in Balboa Park, and come out and get some pho out in City Heights. So we're excited by the opportunities it represents at all levels. And finally, it brings El Cajon Boulevard, which is really an iconic mid-20th century highway, and brings El Cajon Boulevard into the 21st century as a true multimodal boulevard. Ms. Boulevard, you should be happy about that. Beryl Foreman should be recognized, too, for supporting this. But I will tell you, it wasn't easy. This was first presented, you may remember, as the showcase project in 2003. 
to help get build support for the Transnet extension of 2004. So, well, we got the extension, we didn't get the showcase yet, but at that time we selected this route as a showcase route because it showed the highest all-day ridership potential, it had supportive land uses along the entire route, connections to major regional activity centers, and they thought, we thought, it would be the easiest of the candidate routes to implement. Well, we are here 11 years later, and all of the above is really still true, even the part about easiest to implement, because the right-of-way is here, the desire is here, but even with grassroots support, this project met with resistance, and there's a lot that we learned through this process that we are going to apply when we do these projects in other communities. It's important that we address traffic concerns in, the, in construction, parking that we could actually gain rather than lose it, and also there's a real strange mindset here that a bus station somehow brings bus people and hurts business when, in fact, if you go to Washington, D.C., when they were doing the metro system, people were protesting locations of metro stations. They cannot even afford to rent there anymore, these businesses, because they're the desirable destinations. So there's some short-sightedness maybe out there. This route is going to help change people's minds through demonstration of what an economic powerhouse it will be to have a rapid station nearby. So I will also say that I want to recognize again, I want to shout out to, to Miriam Kirshner, who we have been talking about this. You have been leading this for so long, you really deserve a lot of credit. We're excited for Mid-City because uh, it will give opportunities to our youth, it will give working families access to better jobs, it will bring visitors and their dollars into our communities, help build a new constituency for our transit system because we're going to have a whole new slew of riders now. The next time we have to do a project, we're going to have a lot of people who are uh, voters, who ride the system, who rely on it, who are going to be advocates for the extensions of the system, for the support of the system, and it is going to change the face of transit in this city. And also, someday, where we're standing right now, will be the basis of a light rail line. These will, we will be, we, our children, our nephews and nieces, will be cutting the ribbon on a, on a streetcar or light rail system. So I want to thank the leadership at Sandag, at the city, uh, for keeping your eye on the ball and delivering this new iconic service to the region overall and to Mid-City in particular. Thank you, and we're looking forward to the future. Thank you, sir. Great job, Great job. Thank you. Once again, I would like to thank and, and stand up Eric Adams from Sandegs, a project manager. Gary Bossy. <laughs> Gary, where are you at? Simon, from Simon Juan Kleinfelder. Thank you. Um, Tim Taylor, Marty Emerald's office, thanks a lot for what you're doing for tomorrow. Thank you very much and hello to Marty. We know she's always busy doing something be good for the city and we thank you for that. Um, the San Diego, City of San Diego traffic staff, where are you guys at? Thank you. Thank you very much. We couldn't have had this done without you guys. Sandag staff that was involved in this, thank you very much. Contractors, all you guys that really made this thing happen, thank you very much. Okay, after this, when we're done here, we want to have we'll cut the ribbon here. Please stand to the side of the bus if it moves. The, um, don't forget Saturday at Toralta Park, which is at the corner of Orange Avenue and 40th Street, from 10 to 1. There's food, there's fun, face painting, and a bounce house for kids. You can ride the bus, and they're giving away free ride coupons and T-shirts. Sunday, you, uh, you can ride this bus for free all day. So please take you, tell all your friends, like the chairman said, and enjoy this. So please be a part of history and join us for the ribbon cutting. And thank you for being here.